Hello and welcome to this video on Brouwer Etude Number no. 2. This beautiful study in four-part harmony could be thought of as a soprano, alto, tenor, bass type texture. It is only 14 measures long. And uh, by the way, I'm counting the first measure, the pickup measure, as measure one. It's only 14 bars long, but there's a world of information in here. Um, and there are many, many small details that we can talk about. So again, in this video, I'll, I'll go through some technical and musical things and talk about the interplay or the interaction between the technique and the music. And I'll explain some of my interpretive choices. Um, I'm sort of um, reading into the mind of Brower a little bit here, and I'll explain some of my choices. So it's marked choral, or choral, choral texture. It's lento, and the time signature is four, and so slow on the fourth, uh, on the quarter note, might be something like this. One, two, three, four, one, two. Now, I know a lot of people play this study um, if, you, if you watch, you'll notice a lot of people play the chords index middle ring and the, the downstem bass notes with the thumb. But you'll notice that Brower right away has P-I-M, which implies, or doesn't imply necessarily, but creates by default a certain kind of balance. The thumb is heavier, and if we just play naturally, the thumb is going to give us little bit more weight to what would be the tenor voice, the um, the second voice from the from the bottom, right? And in the four part texture. Here I, I see this as a soprano alto tenor in the beginning. So the tenor is played with the thumb. No, the dynamic is mezzo piano and we also have these tenuto markings. You see those little horizontal dashes. And so, first of all, I always think of mezzo piano not only as a dynamic, but as sort of a state of mind. It's like not really quiet, definitely not loud. It's like it's um, gently present, I'd say. And so there's a certain, certain affect or emotional quality that is implied by the mezzo piano. And then those tenutos, I interpret that to mean slightly, um, maybe slightly detached, which naturally happens because we're, we're playing chords and we have to come back to the string. So there's a little gap, but also a little emphatic, um, some emphasis. And then right away we get this bass, which has what is called an indefinite tie, the tie to nowhere, which just means to let it ring indefinitely, as long as you can. And, you know, you might experiment with just the flesh, just the flesh of the thumb on some of these bass notes to create sort of a warm resonant sound. If I play with too much nail, but there's only nail. It's a little forward and bright and it lacks some of the richness that really gives resonance to the sound. So I would say throughout, you know, you might, you might look at how much thumbnail, or if the thumbnail is involved at all in some of these bases. Jumping forward on that topic just a moment, if you look in bar five and six, you've got a forte bass, and then in bar six, you've got the forte with an accent. And in those cases, you can use the thumb to, um, to create a really strong, prominent bass and to get that contrast. Again, a lot of this music is about contrast.
in that section, measure five, you've got some chords that are accented, and these chords can get pretty loud without being too nasty if you let the tip joints collapse. And so I'll get a grip on those, on those strings, let the tip joints collapse. But we definitely want that to penetrate and to have a very different effect than the chords at the very beginning of the piece, which were um, tenuto. So making a difference between tenuto and accented. And I do actually, in this case, I use IMA, but you could. You could get good results with uh, PIM on those chords as well. Now, moving along, we've got more accented chords in bar six. This is the highest part of the piece. The melody has gone all the way up to a high A. And really, Everything from this point of the piece is sort of a decline in energy and intensity all the way to the end where you, you end up on this G major chord and very quiet. So in bar six, we definitely want to be conscious that we're creating a climax in energy and intensity. And then we're going to gradually bring it down. Brower does everything in his power here, writing diminuendos with the dotted lines to show gradual, uh, gradual uh, decline in energy. And then you'll notice that um, he writes in bar nine, he writes uh, mezzo forte sonoro, and then he brings it down to piano in measure 11, and then there's this long diminuendo. So we can see that it's just, it's a project of bringing the intensity down gradually. Um, now, one of the things I would like to say is, like in measure 9, for example, if we play... Don't be afraid of these dissonances. Whether you play them P-I-M or I-M-A, Make sure that you get that instability and the crunch of that dissonance. That's really important in this piece. Because it ultimately gives the, the final release at the, in, in the final measure. Another thing that you want to be take care, you know, we want to be careful of here is uh, holding the third finger down during this section from say bar nine to the end, holding the G down. And when you go to this C over G chord, make sure the bass is still ringing. resonant and, and um, sustained left hand fingerings. This study is often cited as a study in chord balance, and I don't necessarily agree with that. I think it is important to balance the chords properly, and we discussed about, you know, in the beginning there, about how Brower is maybe after a slightly musical imbalance with the thumb on the tenor. I think this study is really about exploring the, the range of dynamic energy that your instrument and your technique um, are capable of. And what I mean is that uh, you've got everything from very tender, quiet sounds, all with a four-part texture, to this kind of crashing, thunderous climax at uh, bars, um, in bars five and six. And what I would encourage you to do with this study is see what the upper limit for your instrument is, where it starts to break up and just sound noisy or unmusical. 
and then see what the lower limit of your technique is in terms of how quietly can you play with a good sound. And then the study really becomes an opportunity to explore that whole range with this kind of gradual um, ascent and descent of energy. And just to see how well you can stage the kind of drama of the piece and how gradually you can do that. I think that's the main purpose of the study. Of course, it is a study in four part harmony. So that's kind of the, the context that Brower couches it in. But mostly it's about this gradual ascent in pitch and energy and then gradual descent and kind of laying the piece to rest like a very soft landing. And again, it's just a wonderful piece. It's, it's so resonant and beautiful. It's a kind of simple and, and almost folk music-like, but at the same time, modern sounding and almost outside of time. So I think you'll, you'll, you'll just gain a lot of benefit and find this piece really rewarding. Hope some of these thoughts are helpful. Good luck practicing.